Yo right, everyone, Shock16, back once again for the Renegade Master, back once again for another new video. Um, yeah, I know, been a long time since I've recorded anything new. Well, apart from the old merchandise video. <laughs> I hope I didn't upset too many people with the last video. Of course, I'm only joking, and when I say I'm only joking, I mean I couldn't actually give a fuck who I've offended or who I've upset. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, memories videos. So yeah, this is off the back of the um, last memories video that I did. If you didn't check it out, it was about my Sky Television memories, satellite TV back in the 90s and the late 80s and stuff like that. But yeah, after S Sky Digital and stuff like that, um, no, before Sky Digital, after that old analog Sky satellite TV in the 90s and stuff like that, um, yes. Yeah, Something else came along, um, Diamond Cable, which eventually became NTL and stuff like that. So I wasn't going to do this. I was actually just going to tag it onto the end of the satellite uh, memories video. But that video was going on for far too long as it was anyway. So I thought I'd do a separate video about NTL memories. But then I thought, mm, is it really old enough? But then you, I thought back and it's like 19 years ago. I mean, next year, 20 years ago, since NTL kind of like rolled around and stuff, though. So, so, yeah, um, NTL, or Diamond Cable, as it was started off as here in the UK. Well, I say Diamond Cable started off here in the UK, because I think it was, um, like, localised. So, here in Nottingham, um, and, like, neighbouring cities, it might have been called Diamond Cable. I mean, obviously, it was definitely called Diamond Cable where I live. But yeah, I think it might have been called something else if you lived at another part of the country or something like that. So yeah, it was very localised, but it was all the same company, if you know what I mean. So, but yeah, right here it was called Diamond Cable. I think in Birmingham though, in the other side of the Midlands, in the West Midlands, I'm from the East Midlands, um, or just North if you're from the South. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think they just called, um, I think they just called it Birmingham Cable or something like that right there, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. So Diamond Cable came along in the late 90s, around about 97, 96, 97 ish. Um, but it didn't really take off to a couple of years later, so I'd say about, from about 97 to about 99 or something like that, that's when it was like most dominant and yeah, it basically came along to rival Sky because before that there was nothing really around in the UK anyway that could rival Sky that's why everybody who had satellite TV had Sky because it was basically all you could get then yeah then like Diamond Cable came along and they rivaled it and the way they rivaled it was is they basically made everything cheaper so you could get like TV packages and stuff like that for cheaper and yeah, un unlike the sky boxes though, um, it, obviously it still had like a top, you still needed like a receiver and everything like that, but the receivers was like really small, like like an old dial-up modem or something like that, they look like an old dial-up modem. If I can get a picture, I'll show it up of what they used to look like. But yeah, little like little boxes and stuff like that like we we never actually had diamond cable tv package because we were still on sky you see we, we didn't need it um back then because we had sky but yeah D diamond cable eventually became ntl you see so i've got to give you the backstory anna so yeah diamond cable came along and it yeah it was cheaper they had a smaller receiver and stuff like that and one thing i always remember about diamond cable though is it used to have like um, a multi-channel thing, you know like on Back to the Future 2 where he's like pulling up all the different channels and stuff like that well you could have like something like that on Diamond Cable, it would have like the Diamond Cable logo in the middle again if I can get a picture of something I'll show you and then you could have all the different channels around it so you could view multiple channels and that's about the only thing I remember about Diamond Cable And but the most memorable thing of Diamond Cable is that it launched the TV, music TV channel, The Box, music television you controlled. And this is when The Box was like, 
well, it was brand new, so it was like it, and it just wasn't regulated as much as it became in later years, shall we say. And what I mean by that is the way that this channel worked, the box worked when it first came out is there'd be like a playlist of songs and music videos would have a three digit number you'd phone through and then you'd enter your three digit number of the music video you wanted and then obviously you'd get charged for the phone call and that's how they made their money. But the thing is, because it was just like an automated system, it meant that you could like get the same music video played probably like one like once after another. So like for instance, let's say, let's pick a song. So like 1997, big song. Something like Puff Daddy's I'll Be Missing You. That was a big hit back in 97, weren't it? So imagine like if you phoned that up and like the number was 777. Again, just giving you an example. So Puff Daddy, I'll Be Missing You. 777, you rang up, you entered that code, but then if somebody else entered that code, and then somebody else rang up and entered that same code as well, so imagine like you and three of your friends phoned up and you all got in at the same, like more or less one after the other, then that means that that music video would be played three times in a row. So yeah, you can see the problem here, can't you? That it was basically a video request channel, but the thing is, there was no regulation between like videos so, um, yeah, you would just get music videos, the same music video played once after the another, like one after another. And, yeah, one one of them, I've talked about this a lot of times, like um, Dan from Colossal Vids, um, he knows this story, he, he laughs at this one. And that's the reason why I don't like, um, you know, the song by Aqua, Dr. Jones. That song did my head in because that would have when that came out about 1999 and like I say this was on the old box when it was still like this so and when that came out obviously it was number one in the UK and everything like that so people were just dialing that number every person like every time you saw like the numbers being dialed at the bottom it was the code for Dr Jones and I shit you not that that one day that video got played about 20 times in a row Dr Jones by Aqua was just played 20 times in a row. So you could see that where the problem was with this channel, the way it worked. But yeah, later on, um, they kind of regulated it. So it was like, so if somebody like requested Dr. Jones, then they would play another three or four different other songs before you'd get Dr. Jones again. So they did kind of regulate it, but you'd still see that video multiple times throughout the day. But then they changed it even more as the channel went on like in later years again and then they then it was something like you wouldn't get the same music video played more than once in an hour. So yeah, so something like that. And I don't know how the box works now because you don't really get it on I think you still get it on Sky, don't you, and stuff like that. And you probably get it on like Virgin Media and stuff like that as well. I don't think you don't get it on Freeview or like that, so I don't know how the box works now. It's probably just a shadow of its former self, like many channels from back in the day. So yeah, oh yeah, another music video that I remember was always played on the box as well. It was by a band, um, like an R&B band, British R&B band, uh, called Ultimate Chaos. And it was a song called Casanova. And that music video used to get played, like, again, it used to get played like it would it would finish and then it would play again and yeah but the funny thing about that music video is I've never seen it since and I was trying to look for it earlier on um, YouTube before I made this video and I can't even find the music video for it there's like live performances and stuff like that and you can get the audio track and stuff like that but I can't seem to find the music video for it but yeah Ultimate Chaos with a K <laughs> Casanova Maybe maybe some of you remember that song, but yeah, that's that's just a memory of Diamond Cable for me because that's the only time I ever heard that song, saw that video, never heard that song again, and never seen the video again since neither. So yeah, never seemed to get played on any of the other music channels. But yeah, like I say, we never actually had the um, Diamond Cable when it was Diamond Cable, um, but we did have the phone line because they also offered phone lines as well. So yeah, um, again. In the UK, if you had a home line, a main line, 
a landline, whatever you want to call it, you more than likely had BT. There was other communications available, but I don't think I knew anybody who didn't have a BT line. I mean, even all like the phone boxes and everything are all owned by BT. I say all the phone boxes, you don't get many of them around no more, do you? So yeah, that's a thing of the past now, isn't it? Phone boxes, they're disappearing off streets and stuff now, but not many people need them, do you? If you've got a mobile phone, everybody's got a mobile phone now, don't you? You don't need a phone box. It's like landlines. Not many people have landlines now, do they? You find people have landlines if they have a... if they actually have a TV package with like Sky or something, they'll have the, like, the phone or something because they throw it in as part of the package, but nobody really uses landlines, it's just there and it rings when cold callers want to sell you some double glazing or some PPI check or something like that. That's about all a landline gets used for these days, isn't it? Um, but yeah, so we did have the phone installed in the late 90s, about 98 to 99. And yeah, the good thing about that though was, um, I think it was... In fact, I keep looking over here because, like always, I've got my notes. I've made like little bullet points and stuff like that so I can talk about it. Um, so, yeah, um, cheaper rates than BT. So, obviously, that was a selling point again, just like the TV package outdid Sky. They started undercutting BT. Um, so, a lot of people went over to like the diamond cable phone lines around my area anyway. I don't know what it was like around your area. Um, but, yeah, but one of the biggest selling points about their phone lines is, and I think it was after 6 p.m. till 11 p.m., if you phoned Diamond K, if you had a Diamond Cable phone and somebody else had Diamond Cable line as well, you could call each other for free. So it would literally cost you nothing, which must have been a godsend for my parents. Because like with me and my sister and everything, talking to our our friends and like me to my girlfriend, my sister to her boyfriend and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? It must have cut the phone bill like in half straight away because they just said you can use the phone but as long as you use it after six. Do you know what I mean? And like I say, a lot of people had the diamond cable phone so it was free. Do you know what I mean? Diamond cable to diamond cable was free. Between a certain time and night. Um, so yeah, anyway. But yeah, we never had the TV, as I said, until the turn of the millennium. That's right, the year 2000 came and I've mentioned this a lot in my videos before as well, that this is when we had the big move. And the big move is basically when we moved from our family house, so basically the house I grew up in, age 6 to 18. So yeah, lived all the way through there, childhood, little child, bigger child, teenager, adult. We moved out in the year 2000, big move. Um, yeah, and then we, so yeah, we moved into a new area and Diamond Cable got bought out by a company known as NTL. Um, so yeah, and when we moved into our new house, which is the house that my mum and dad still live in now actually, so yeah, Jesus, they've been there 19 years now. God, that's gone, that's gone really fast. Um, but yeah, when we moved into there, we wanted um, Sky Digital because obviously um, analog had been phased out and Sky was now rolling out digital. And but yeah, we were told when we went to get Sky um, installed, they told us that they couldn't install it into our area. It wasn't available because like where they live, it was it's like a little village, and in the early two thousands, it wasn't even on the map. That's right, if you had a map of the UK, it wasn't on there, it was just like um, formed with like a neighbouring estate. So it's just really weird that, it, I mean it's on the map now and stuff, do you know what I mean? Things have come along. <laughs> but yeah, it's just it was just like a, a little village so it weren't, weren't really there and for some reason you couldn't get Sky Digital, but you could get NTL, that's the weird thing. <laughs> Whereas now, as you know, the, um, NTL, in about 2007, it was bought out by Virgin Media. So this is why it's weird, because now you can get Sky just about everywhere, but there's still areas where you can't get Virgin Media. Which is weird, isn't it? So it's like kind of reverse, but yeah. They refused to install it. They said, basically, um, Sky Digital won't be available in your area for about another year. So it was like, go a year and wait for Sky, do you know what I mean? Just go without 
digital TV, satellite TV or get NTL. So we was like, we'll just get NTL. I mean, a lot of people have recommended it. I think my uncle and auntie had NTL, so they recommended it. People at my mum and dad's workplace and stuff like that would recommend it. A lot of people um, I knew from university. Um, yeah, a lot of my, my a lot of my college mates and stuff like that. They all recommended NTL. They said it was great. So sorry if you can hear noises outside. I live on a main road, so. But yeah, so we we just went with it because people were just saying, yeah, it's just as just as good as Sky, really. Because you got all the movie channels and everything like that on it and stuff like that. So it was just yeah, just another way of getting the satellite TV, really. But yeah, it was, NTL was great. It was it was like it was was a big kind of step up from the old analog Sky, if you ask me, because it had a lot more channels. There was a lot more interactivity on it and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, um, when it changed to NTL, then obviously they got rid of the old modem looking boxes, and then you got like a normal kind of top box looking a bit more. I mean, looking a bit more like Sky Digital, what Sky Digital was offering and stuff like that. But <laughs> I always remember the remote. The remote was like, um, it was weird. It was like a, I don't know how to describe the shape, like a teardrop kind of shape. So yeah, it was like an, like an overly kind of shape and it was blue. It had silver buttons on the side like that. Yeah, I think they changed it though in later years. I think like as it went in, went on, the remote was still the same shape and stuff like that, but I think it was just black. But yeah, originally it was like a, like a bluey, purpley kind of colour, and it had silver buttons on the side. There you go. So yeah, one of, one of the great things, what I mean about um, it had improved interactivity on and stuff like that, you had actually a button on the remote which was called um, NTL Interactive, and when you pressed that button, um, like it brought up like very early kind of internet because you could get the internet through your um, NTL box so that was the first time we ever had an email address and it wasn't even an email address of mine it was an e it was my dad's email really because he was the account holder for the TV package so yeah but that's the first time we had an email address and yeah with, with the interactive uh, service you could get like um, interactive games and stuff like that so it was really good, and what, like one of the games, like well, two of the games actually that really stand out to me that we I used to play a lot on Vir Virgin on NTL Interactive was, um, and again, let me know in the comments if you had NTL and if you remember playing these games as well because these games seem to be untraceable. You can't get them. Like I've looked online on Google, um, so yeah, if I find any images to be able to put them in this video, I'll be surprised because one of them seems to be really scarce. But the first one I remember playing was, it was like a, you know, like them old Tamagotchi cyber pet kind of game. It was like a more advanced version of that. So you got like an animal and you had to like look after it and stuff like that. Like it was like a virtual pet kind of game. Um, but when it died, you got like a headstone and you could put the headstone in like a graveyard, like an online graveyard. So it would be like, you could see like all the headstones of everybody else you knew who played that game and if you like linked friends on there and stuff like that you could see like all their pets died but the thing is you could customize what the like the gravestone so you could say like here lies such and such died of such and such and then you could like write a personal message so it was like people used to use the headstones to message one another so it was like you could use it as like I don't know, <laughs> yeah, like a little bit of a messaging service. It was like, I mean, a free way of messaging people because you just started a new pet and you'd instantly kill it. You'd just overfeed it or something like that and then it would die. And then you'd get an headstone, but you could write a message on it. So you could just like use headstones to message people really. <laughs> kind of a sneaky way to message people for free. Um. Yeah, and, and the other one, oh, the one that I used to love though, and like I say, this is the, a really scarce one, and it was called um, something like Alien Fish Tank or something like that. So it would be like a simulation. 
Um, so you do know how you get like Fish Tycoon, it run like on the same kind of premise as that but it was more cartoony and it was like more tongue in cheek, it had like a bit of like um, humour and stuff to it like that so like the fish was like named after philosophers and stuff like that so it was called like Philosophish and stuff like that and you have fish that was named after like famous philosophers, you know what I mean like, you know, like Socrates and stuff like that and, and basically you'd start off with like little fish called sprats and there would be like white sprats or something like that and then you had to like mate them so that they would make a different coloured and then you had like a freezer and you could freeze so many sell so many and that's how you like brought bigger fish and you could it was all about breeding fish and discovering new things and it was great I used to spend so much time on that and like I say I've looked for like some kind of online equivalent of it because you'd think that somebody would be able to provide like a download of it or something, it doesn't, doesn't seem to be anywhere on it, it doesn't even seem to be images on Google, so yeah, I will look and I will try and put a picture up of it to remind you, like maybe, like I say, maybe you played it, but there just doesn't seem to be anything online about Alien Fish Tank, or whatever it's called, but yeah, I used to spend masses of time on that game. So yeah, another thing that I used to use the um, NTL interactive service for as well, there used to be another music channel on NTL called Rapture TV. Uh, it didn't last for long, I think it was only on there for a couple of years or something like that. But what it was, it was all like Clubland music, you know like IB for Clubland kind of music and stuff like that. And it would play, um, like you could request songs, but it wasn't like the box, you didn't like type numbers in or something like that, it had a, a live DJ on there and it would have like, um, you know like webcam feeds to like um, clubs, so like you had like, man, like it would have like webcam feeds to like Manumission and uh, Amnesia and stuff like that, so like actual clubs in Ibiza, you'd get the live feed and stuff like that and you could request songs to the DJs and stuff like that, but it wasn't the DJs in the club, it was like the DJs who was like running the, the Rapture TV kind of channel and he would put like, um, so you'd have like the live feed, webcam live feed from the club and then you'd have like the music video in the background and stuff like that and then you'd have like a live kind of chat going on at the bottom and stuff like that and so, but, so like I say, yeah, it, w it would charge you, if you were doing it on the internet, it would charge you to send like emails and requests, but if you did it through interactive and you used your NTL email address that you got when you set up your NTL interactive, then you could do it for, for free. So I used to play that fish game, but I would have in the background that channel on, so I could listen to all the Clubland music, and then, but then I could like live chat to people and um, request songs from the DJ, like music videos from the DJ and stuff like that. So yeah, let me know if you remember that as well, Rapture TV. Like I say, I think it only lasted like a year, maybe two years, and then it just kind of disappeared. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was really good that you could request songs like through your email and stuff like that. Oh yeah, so yeah, the other big thing about NTL was um, it offered a service called Front Row Movies. So do you know how you get like Sky Pay-Per-View and stuff like that? Um, what what do they call? What is the Sky equivalent? Because we actually did get Sky after we got we had NTL for about four years, maybe five years or something like that, and then we did actually get Sky Digital in installed in, in installed eventually. But I can't remember what it was called. But yeah, new release movies. It was like a front row service and stuff like that. And I used to use that quite a lot because it was. I don't know, it wasn't very much, it was probably like three pound a movie or something like that, so it weren't, it weren't bad. So yeah, some of the movies that I saw, thanks to NTL Front Row, was um, Snatch, one of my favourite movies of all time, yeah, Snatch, the, you know, the Jason Statham, um, yeah, Jason Statham, Brad Pitt, playing a pikey. <laughs> And yeah, probably one of Brad Pitt's best roles, if you ask me. Yeah, so the Guy Ritchie um, joint, one of my favourite movies of all time. Um, 
Planet of the Apes, the Tim Burton Planet of the Apes remake. Uh, yeah, not very good. Marky Mark Wahlberg. Estella Warren. You remember Estella Warren when they was trying to make her a thing? She was like a model. And then she went into acting and I think she did like two films. She did Planet of the Apes and Kangaroo Jack. <laughs> and then she like... I don't know, she just faded off. I don't know if she's still acting or still modelling or whatever. Um, but yeah, she never became a thing, did she? Um, another thing that I watched on there was Space Cowboys. Which... I don't know, I think that's a good movie, but maybe it's just like my nostalgia kicking in. Um, but yeah, if you've not seen it, it's about like a, a satellite and it malfunctions, but they can't send up young astronauts to fix it because it's based on old technology. Um, basically, the plans and old technology that somebody else like designed back in the 60s or something like that. So they need to go back to the original designer and he says he'll only do it if they send him up to space like that and he takes a team with him, his old like team, so it's got like all the old classic actors, so you've got like Clint Eastwood and Tommy Lee Jones and Donald Sutherland and people like that in it. It's, it's quite a good movie, but yeah, I remember watching that one um, with the family, that, that was like a family pick. Um, and another one that I remember as well was, um, so... Here in the UK, there used to be a, a girl band in the 90s known as All Saints. And, yeah, they made a film. It was like a, a crime film called Honest. So, yeah, does anybody remember that film? It was kind of like touted quite a lot when it first came out because it had All Saints. It, well, it had all of them at sets for Shazna in it, racist, because she's the only black one. <laughs> I'm calling it now. Why didn't they put her in? I mean, I know it was about three sisters, so... But they could have just had them as the sisters' mates. I don't know why she wasn't in it. <laughs> but yeah, for some reason she weren't in it. But the other three were. And that's why it was big, because it was like, oh, all saints are making a movie, and... But yeah, I don't even... Did it even get a cinematic release? I don't even know. But it was shit. The film was shit. The best thing about it was... Um, the Appleton sisters, they get the wax out in it. That's about the best thing about it. But yeah, weird one. Never seen that movie again since. I've only watched it once on Front Row. Never seen it again since. Never uh, never hear anybody ever talk about it or anything like that. A lot of people probably don't even know it existed. But there you go, there's a film with All Saints, with all Saints in it, so there you go. Well, three of them, anyway. Um. Is there anything else? No, I think that's it. I think I've covered NTL and stuff like that. So yeah, I just thought I'd tack it on, even though this video is going on for about half hour, isn't it? So yeah, I'll wrap it up. Um, let me know, did you have NTL? Like I say, it's, it's we had it when we first moved in in the year 2000, so yeah, 19 years ago now already. Did you have NTL? What's your favourite memories of NTL? Do you remember any of the things that I've just talked about? If so, let me know, comments below. Sorry if this video has gone on for too long, but you know how it is. It's a memories video. So yeah, get on board, join the memories, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.